A, uh, we have Stuart Robson away to my right, Paul Mariner and Alejandro Moreno oh. on my left. Uh, Gab Marcotti waiting in the wings. We start right here in the United States. There was a uh, final whistle on hate game played last night between Chelsea and the New England Revolution. A match to aid a very good cause. However, it proved to be the final whistle on the season and perhaps the start of next season for Ruben Loftus-Cheek who managed to rupture an Achilles tendon after coming on as a substitute on... The, uh, the turf surface. Let's bring Gab Marcotti in first. Uh, freshly laid grass surface played over the top of AstroTurf. Uh, I imagine the reaction in England hasn't been too positive to this development, Gab. I mean, surely it hasn't. And look, uh, Sadi had said as well that, you know, you, you could have done without this trip to, to go and, and prepare properly for the, for the Europa League final. Then again, you weigh that over the reason why they were there. Uh, this is something that Chelsea, uh, or sorry, a minority of Chelsea fans, have had a serious issue with uh, in the past and historically, going back to the 70s. The club wanted to make a statement um, uh, about this, about about inclusion, about uh, you know fighting extremism and, and types of hatred, um, and they raised four million along the way in doing it. So this is something that was that really was important, I think, to, to that side of the club. It really is. It's a really unlucky young man could have just as easily gotten injured in training. Mm, coming off the back of the Callum hudson Adoy injury too, Paul. You were there actually calling the game for radio. Uh, yep. Well-intentioned, as Gab says, but uh, the timing? That's the big question on this from a Chelsea perspective. Well, the, the problem is with uh, the busy schedule with, with, with both clubs. I mean, it's, it's difficult to find a slot to put it in. This was probably the best slot, uh, you know. Mm. Chelsea come over on charter, they straight out back to London after the game. It was, it was a four-day trip for them, though, right? Yeah, all, well, all the, the, things the, told. Yes, it was uh, a very serious trip for, for mm. the vast majority of the group. Um, and, and if you witness the game, if you watch the game, you could see the way that Chelsea went to both. It was fun, super professional. Mm. Hazard played the first half. He was absolutely terrific. You know, some, some wonderful top, top athletes on, on view for, for the local uh, Chelsea fans to, to view. And they really got into it, 20, you know, 27,000 plus. Um, look, w when you see a player going down, Hudson and Doyle, when Hudson and Doyle went down at Sanford Bridge w with his Achilles injury, there's nobody around him. Mm. Yes, Diego Fagundes was around Loftus Cheeks, but I don't think, think there's any contact. Mm. I really don't. It's just one of those things. Do you think the surface played into this injury? Because they laid grass yeah. over turf, didn't look, they? Look, look, we, we've... When I was coaching at the Revolution, uh, there would be international games that they'd lay the field down, and no matter how long it takes to, to lay the field down, it's never what you want it to be. Mm. Um, going back to my original statement, Chelsea came out were very, very professional. They played the ball, they got it down, they, they, they played it around. So I'm not going to blame the field, I just think it was not one of those freak actions. Mm. It's a tough one, isn't it, Ali? Yeah, well, look, it's a worthy cause, mm. and I think we can all agree on that. Mm. But it's also very clear that the timing for Chelsea, and never mind the New England Revolution, but for Chelsea is less than ideal when you have preparation to come for what it's going to be a significant time of the year for you, where you can get a trophy, where you can make a season into a more successful one than it has been up until this point. And so from the manager's perspective and from the player's perspective, it is less than ideal to have to take this trip. As a learning experience, as an, as gratifying as as it, uh, as it might have been, because of the opportunities that they had while they were here and the visits that they had and the presentations that they had, all those things are worthy causes. But they can be done after the season is over. Mm. They can be done after you have played Europa League final. And I know because people are going to throw it out and say, "Well, you can't do anything about the scheduling because you have to plan it ahead of time." Well, then plan it ahead of time so that you give yourself yeah. enough of a window to say, "You know what? Hey guys, we got to stick around after a, a week after we're done because we have this game." And that's yeah. it. And then you play with that. I think you can do both things. You can have a worthy cause and you can also take care of your priority that could, that it's also uh, having results out on the field. Yeah. You can balance those things out. You do it correctly. This sort of things may not happen. Chelsea obviously didn't know they were going to be in the Europa League final. No, they, but, they but, but Ali's they, absolutely right. But but they, they, but there's every possibility. You know that they're in that competition. You know they're a very good side. Right. You know they could get to the one. Ali's absolutely right. But my thoughts are with Loftus-Cheek because... 
Is it a big deal? Hudson, Hudson and Adoy. Gab, and was, Lof- Gab was downplaying it, saying, eh, you know, oh, I don't care Gab. what Gab says about the, the team. I'm talking about the player himself. Right. Loftus Cheek has been out on loan to several places. He's, he's been playing for England at times. He struggled to get in the Chelsea team. At last, Sari has decided yeah. that he's going to give him a chance. He's played well for several weeks. We had Hudson Adoy doing the same down the right hand side when he got into the side. And both those players, having got into the team with the demand of the fans almost, and now got long-term injuries. And that's bad for their career, bad for England, and I think over a long period, bad for Chelsea I also as well. think it's very simplistic to just say, well, this could have happened in training. Mm. Well, yes, but then I can also make arguments that when you put uh, the body through a, an extra trip here and there and standing around and seeing presentations and coming here and coming there, now you're exposing the body to something that it's regularly not exposed to. And so, therefore, maybe I can also make the argument without being a doctor, without being, but having been a player, that you want to be at the top of your physical ability. Mm. Doing extra things that are usually not in, 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 within the scope of your daily activities those things strain your body, and eventually mm. the body breaks down. Mm. Gap, uh, not the only news involving Chelsea. Uh, news reports breaking in Italy, I think they uh, originated, about Maurizio Sarri uh, being on his way out, regardless of what happens in that Europa League final. And guess what? The name of Frank Lampard has surfaced as the man who's going to replace him. Is this at all likely to happen? So I smell a bit of a rat here. Mm. Um, I find it hard to believe that Frank Lampard, as he plays, you know, the biggest game of his managerial uh, career in in the championship final, is uh, all of a sudden talking about going back to Chelsea as manager. I note that Maurizio Sarri has been strongly linked with uh, with Roma, and then today he's now been strongly linked with Milan in the press. It seems like every manager in Italy's being linked with somebody else because there's so many likely vacancies this summer. Um, and I think this is people putting two and two together. Uh, you know, like from Chelsea's perspective, if you want sorry, you you have to you're gonna have to to, to, to buy him out, right? Because they're they don't plan on firing him. That's certainly not um, not what, what they said they're gonna do and what they're planning to do given that he's finished top four. So between the expense of getting Lampard of, of 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 getting money in for for sorry, I, to me this is absolutely entirely baseless. Now, obviously, if the summer rolls around and sorry gets a better offer somewhere else, but I I just can't imagine Chelsea while they're in Boston ringing up Lampard, who's who's here in England in the in the playoffs, uh, and uh, and all of a sudden doing a deal for him. It just just doesn't pass the smell test. 